Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing great today. Um, today we've got a glass of wine and I've got my laptop right next to me and we are going to be watching and reviewing the first episode of Durban Housewives. Now this is going to be a continuous um, series on my channel. I'm going to be reviewing the entire season of Durban Housewives and I won't lie, I already watched the first episode, so I just want to share with you guys my thoughts on the episode. If you guys have any opinions about it, then make sure that we have the discussion down below. But let me not ramble any further. Let me get into this review. Okay, so we have um, Sorisha introducing and narrating the first bit of the, um, of the show. Um, this is the voice we first get introduced to and they basically just showing Durban and its beauty. I love Durban, it's a beautiful city. The weather is amazing and um, there's a lot of money in Durban. There are a lot of entrepreneurs in Durban, there are a lot of people, especially black people, black women making money and I live for it. So I'm very, very excited to watch the season and I was excited for the first episode. So. Um, as we continue to see, they start introducing themselves and we first see Sarisha and I feel like Sarisha is the Beyonce of the group. Like, I think it's because obviously she has more money, I think. We get introduced to Annie and Annie is, um, all about business. She's, it's Mrs. Ambitious for you. Okay, sweetie. <laughs> so I'm here for it. And then the next one we get introduced to is the ever so beautiful Mrs. Um, Mwane. Music is the business and I am its boss. Okay, bitch. Did you get that? <laughs> and then after Ayanda, we get introduced to Homozo. Now Homozo is um, another businesswoman. Like all of these girls are just, you know, moguls. They are business women they are out here doing the thing which i'm here for i love it in a world full of choices i know i am enough and that is miss nonku sweetie <laughs> nonku. <laughs> let's continue watching i never stumble distinctive is the centerpiece of my table what does that mean oh is is Okay, I feel like some of these um, one-liners or whatever you call them, these mantras that they are living by, some of them are just like, you need to sit down. I get what she's saying, but I'm just like, really? But yeah, I mean, you know? And okay, so that's the cost. So basically, now we get introduced to, we go into Sarisha's house. Sarisha's all about wellness and fitness. I love Sarisha's house. It's so beautiful. It's big. It's in Mshlanga. <laughs> it's in Mshlanga and it's a beautiful house. Um, she shows us her family and she um, does a mini introduction about herself and her import-export business. And I'm here for it. I am here for it all, honey. Like, I am not, um, especially Sarisha's family and everything that she has going on, I don't mind. Give it to me. So we get introduced to Sarisha and her husband and her husband is going on some business trip and he's going on in detail about what he's going to go do and whatever. I do feel like for most of these rich people, um, especially these two, they're using this as a tool to market their businesses and to also change public perception because um, especially uh, when it comes to people that have been involved in scandal because Vivian has been involved in some corruption, you know, accusation, not saying that he was found to be corrupt. Well, I don't know. Maybe he was, but I don't know. But he was involved in some sort of corruption scandal. So I think, like Mum Kize, people want to change public perception and want to use the vehicle of reality TV to um, appease the public. And I feel like they've seen, especially Mum Kize, even though people know that lady has been involved in corruption, but people still like her. People are still like, oh my God, yes, rich aunt, yes. Even though he has my mali or mama be to lay a pa, you understand? But we're not here to debate any of that. We are here for the content. We want to watch luxury content and oh, 
Surisha is giving us exactly that. And then we move on to Homoto. Now, Homoto is um, a business owner. She has an event company and she has some shop and she's selling stuff. Not quite sure. And she's married to a soccer, I mean, a rugby player, a former rugby player, a former Springbok. And I think the guy is a twin. And then we see her in her daily life. She is, you know, getting the kids ready for school. Blase, blase. Nothing too much. Her house is, she has a very modest house, even though it's not. I feel like it's a nice house. But for housewives, I mean, especially after Sorisha, um, we like, honey, the opulence, the glamour, you know? Um, and. She has a beautiful life. So we see her and I really, really like the fact that she, um, like I was saying, like the, like the entire cast, people have their own businesses and they are active in their businesses. It's not just some, you know, business that I own, but like we don't see you ever going into your business, like showing us what you actually do. Besides Sarisha, I haven't seen Sarisha going into business and doing, but she don't, she don't need to do that. <laughs> I mean, her being in her house is enough. That's the kind of we want from her, you know? And then the other ladies then do go into their businesses and they show us they, um, they stores, they salons, you know, all this different stuff that they have. And I love the fact that they were so, um, they were connected so organically. So Risha was like the clue, like I was saying in the beginning, she was the clue that, and she was hosting an event. So she wanted, um, Homozo to, um, bring flowers for the event. So basically like the whole crew was connected, not necessarily the whole crew, but basically the whole crew was connected um, through Sarisha, which is organic. I can see that. Unlike random girls just, you know, out of the blue meeting up for no reason, you know? And then the one thing that stuck out to me was when Sarisha's husband was actually going on a business trip and Sarisha was like, um, it's a rarity for him to be home. I'm not like, girl. But that's usually the case with these men. Like this man is a businessman. He's busy. He has multiple businesses. I think he has like over five or four businesses. And he is worth allegedly 250 million rands. Okay. So like that is a coin. So if you worth that much money, that means you are busy and booked. You are here and there. But now for me, it's like, how do you sustain a marriage with someone that is not present in the home? But I get those are the sacrifices that you have to make, Ndase. Because if you go, it's like 250 million rands or your husband being at home with you every single night. You choose. <laughs> and Usarishna has, um, I mean... So Risha has made her choice and it's just a bit of a tricky situation. Okay, and then we move on to the scene with uh, Homoto and her husband, Odwa, which I love. I love the fact that they are, um, I think they both, um, like they, they seem like partners. No one feels like they are overshadowed by the other. Um, I like, and I like the fact that Odo was so excited for the fact that she got, um, Sarisha as a client and all of that. And I like the fact that even though, um, Homoto was a cast member with Sarisha. So they basically, in, in, like, in terms of the show, they like peers, but she still was willing to be like praising and be like, oh my God, I'm so happy I got her as a client. Cause she does. She doesn't want to not acknowledge her as a big deal because Sarisha is a big deal, and not necessarily Sarisha, but like the business that she's bringing to her. Komoto is. She will tell you that, oh my God, you're the bomb.com. You know, she's not afraid to tell people that, oh my God, you're the shit. And she also, I think, she realizes that it's not gonna take away from her being like a boss ass bitch, you know? She's willing to compliment other women. And I think that was the whole vibe from Jay, like from this first episode, from all the different ladies, people were just like, not shy with the comments. I mean, um, with the compliments, they were giving each other compliments and it was refreshing, especially from housewives because these ladies can get shady, honey. Very shady, even though they know that no, Usman Wang is doing what she's that what she should be doing. Like she's winning and she's thriving in her industry, but they won't ever like give them props. 
But here, yeah, like, I like the fact that they are giving each other props. Like, we move on to Miss Annie. So Annie then shows up and she is driving a pink Mercedes Benz and it looks really, really cute. And she's a choreographer and she has her own salon and she and her husband own um she and her husband own a few nightclubs in Durban. So I feel like she like she was saying, Hi, it's Mrs. Ambitious to you. <laughs> Basically, it's because of the multiple businesses that she runs. So I like her personality. I think, like in the introduction, I think she's a very bubbly girl. Bubbly. I think she's a really nice girl and I mean, have no issues with her. And I like the fact that, oh, and her home, like she looks like she's she's got money, you know? Because for me, when I watch Housewives, I'm sorry, I'm watching for aesthetics. Personality is there, yes. Personality can make or break you, but especially the first episode, like I don't really know the girls like that, so I'm just looking at... I want to see opulence. I want to see like lavish things. That's what I'm watching like, Housewives for. I want to see a big house, cars, you know, businesses, like all of this type of stuff. I want to see a girl that is busy, you know, and this episode is not short of any of that. She then obviously gets a call from Homoto and she gets invited. Um, she She's now supposed to provide dances for... Um, for Sarisha's event. But now, the thing that I caught there is the fact that she was not invited. She was not invited to the event, but Ohomoto invited her. Because if you realize, she was like, um, I mean, Ohomoto was like, blah, 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 you have to, she was saying something, but basically alluding to the fact that when you are there, you have to, like, you know. And then she, Annie, is like, oh, I didn't know I was invited. And then Sarisha obviously being the sweet Surisha, has to be like, of course, you know, even though she didn't invite her, but it, I feel like if it was a different type of, like a different group, that would have been like a confessional. So I think that's the one thing I can say about the house, this housewives. Maybe it's because it's the first episode and people don't want to like bring out their true colors. I feel like even though they're nice, but I feel like they're too nice. Am I wrong for saying that? Because I feel like Sarisha should have had like a confessional where she's like, um, I didn't really invite Smang Mang to the party. I mean, Annie to the party. But, um, you know, and go on about that. Like that would have been a normal conversation. And I don't think there would have been anything wrong with that. I don't think she would have been shady if she said something like that. But they just went past that. They didn't even discuss it. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then after that, we move on to Miss Ayanda, Mrs. Ayanda. So if someone is a widow for like a while, because I think Ayanda has been a widow for what, three years now, I think. Um, when do you stop calling them Mrs.? Because then what happens when they start dating? Do they, do you still call them Mrs.? What, like... What's, what's the, can you guys tell me below? I, I, I've never um, had that discussion with anyone before. Like, what happens? Do you stay a missus after your husband passes away? Like, when do you drop the missus? Yeah. So anyway, we get introduced to Ayanda and um, she's talking about her and her husband, her, her uh, late husband's relationship. And then she also talks about her relationship with her kids. And she does go on to say that she feels like the relationship between her kids um, and her were, was not as close um, before her husband passed away. But when the husband did pass away, she then became closer with the boys, which I can completely understand. Because if you have, especially kids that are of um, similar age, that not that, not that you're not present in their lives, but... When it's just you and your kids, it's just you, they are you, like, they are your everything. They become the center of your world. Unlike when you are um, still married to your partner, obviously, you have to then split your time. So, like, naturally, you would become closer with your kids. But I do think she was very close with her husband, especially with the traveling. I can see maybe she could, like, be um, 
she would take the kids with her, she was saying, but I don't think that was all the time. I can't see a situation where her parents or Sfiso's parents had to, or nannies or whatever, had to look after the kids while they were, you know, going on the road, traveling and doing all of that type of stuff. So I can see what she means by that. And it makes a lot of sense that she would have grown closer with the boys after her husband's passing. But yeah, so we go on and we also meet her brother who's a stylist. Um, and you know, they make a good team because between those two, there's quite a lot of banter, which I really enjoy. Um, <laughs> So we go on to see that and she has this beautiful house and she drives a beautiful car. You know, it's everything that we're looking for in housewives. We, we want to see things, okay? As basic as we just want to see things and I am here for it. Okay, and then we get introduced to Nongku, which is a very, very... <laughs> mm. She's critical in the show because of her drama. I live for drama, but Nunku's drama is not like shits and giggles type of drama. It's actual real life drama, which I can appreciate. But in the same breath, I'm like, eh, did it really need to be like played out on the show? But we always ask for authenticity when it comes to these reality shows. We want people to actually show their actual lives and not some made up, you know, fantasy life. So I can always appreciate that, but in the same breath, it's like, we don't know what we want. When people give us real, we're like, oh, it's too real. But when they give us fake, it's like, this shit is bullshit. It's fluff. It's just fillers. They don't have content. So I don't know where I stand with that one. I, I, I just don't know how I feel about it. So Nongo is self-made. Um, well, we don't know, but she does present herself as a self-made businesswoman, which I love. She has a construction company and she's newly divorced, blase blase, and she has um, kids. And she stays by herself. She has this big house, it's a beautiful house, and she has beautiful cars. So I live for this type of content, like I was saying. Okay, so after that, we see Tobile's introduction. Tobile is in construction as well, just as... Um, Surisha's husband is and she is now invited to the Diwali event at Surisha's house. I love Tobile. I love her attitude. I like the fact that she's so real Like even Surisha says that she is you know, she's she brings she grounds a lot of them And you know, she whenever there's a lot of fluff whenever the conversation is turning into fluff she reels it back and Surisha goes on about her and she loves the fact that she's a business in construct. I mean, she's a woman in construction and she's a, her own boss, blah, 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 blah. And then they touch on COVID as well because I think the series was shot during COVID, obviously. So they do touch on that and how it has affected some of their businesses. And to, um, Tobile then goes on and she talks about um, how it has affected her. So after that, I really, I really, really like the ladies. I love them. I love the energy. It was so refreshing. Even though in retrospect, I'm like, hmm, was it maybe like orchestrated to be like that? Because there is a little bit of, is it genuine? Do you get what I mean? Now we have the event. Now Tobile pulls through with her friend, Nonku. That was not invited and is not wearing the proper attire to the Diwali event. So, obviously, Surisha is not going to make a big deal about it. Why am I saying obviously? Well, it's been consistent with the character that has been portrayed. So, uh, she seems like a sweet girl. She's been portrayed as a sweet lady. So, she wouldn't cause any drama. So, she welcomes them. She greets them. And she ushers them in. And they are... Oh, and then she does make a comment about Nanko not wearing the proper attire. But it's not a thing that she raises in the in the actual scene Annie comes in with her bronzer and mm -hmm, cha that makeup now miss Annie is cute okay she's a cute girl but that makeup mm -mm. there was just a lot happening from the lashes to the bronzer to everything else it was just a lot so anyway we move on and uh the last person to make an entrance is Miss Ayanda Nwane or Mrs. Ayanda Nwane. She walks in looking beautiful as always and the ladies have like a 
hoo-ha moment about her outfit they're complimenting her she looks beautiful and i like that like it's in theme with the ladies they're complimenting her they're not shy to say babes um like you look so nice and they have a cute giggle about it and they sit down and then the introduction starts i get get troubles so before we get to the Ayanda and uh, Nongu saga, there's actually the Nongu and the vegetarian saga. Because Nongu is a carnivore. Not an omnivore, she's a carnivore. She <laughs> only eats meat. And she basically goes on, which I found quite rude because... If you are at someone's event, at someone's home, and especially... It's not just like a random party, it's Diwali, like it's part of their culture, it's part of their tradition, it's part of their religion. It's like a big deal, it's not some frivolous party where it's like, oh, games night or whatever. If you know it's something sacred and something important to them, why are you going to make a big deal about it? Because I feel like Nongo could have just gotten there and ate the food and maybe she could have been like, okay, initially maybe... um. Tobila didn't tell her that it was going to be all vegetarian. The initial, oh, oh my god, I didn't know. Oh, shucks. And then leave it at that. She didn't have to continue the entire night talking about the fact that, oh my god, like, this, um, I need, I, I eat meat. What am I going to eat? And then pretending that the food is chicken. Like, do you like the chicken? Like, I just found it off-putting, the entire thing, which was just like, hmm. No, uncle girl mm, i'm not sure about that but um yeah so that was that she and sorisha handled it very well she was not um she didn't seem upset and obviously we don't know what happened behind the scenes because a lot of stuff is edited and we get shown what they want us to see what the producers want us to see so that's what we saw and that's what we're gonna go on okay we're not gonna go on something that we didn't see so Sarisha took it like a champ. She didn't say anything about it because she didn't want to cause drama on the table with um, the other ladies. And then the drama starts. Hi, Kim Dase. Oh, no, wants a special introduction. It's very, very awkward at this point. And Nongu goes on to say, why are you not going to ask who I am? Like, and Ayanda was just like, oh. I feel like you just introduced yourself, so... And she looked like such a fool. She looked like a fool, I won't lie. Because then she swallowed her words and she carried on. But I do, in retrospect... Now, I did watch the show, so obviously I'm saying all of this in retrospect. In retrospect, I can see... Nanki was not delusion in... Nanki was not delusional in her doing that, now that we know what was happening. Because I do feel like Ayanda knows Nanku. I won't lie. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I do feel like Ayanda knows Nanku. And she knew that Nanku was the Nanku. But it was not not the time, no place. And um, she had no reason to entertain Nanku and her antics. Because the way Nanku was going on, girl. Mm -mm. So we move on and we... They bring up, oh, and then they're talking about the elephant in the room. So basically, let me put this glass down because this is where the bullshit starts. Now, Nongu wants acknowledgement from Ayanda, but Ayanda is not giving her any acknowledgement. She's just like, um, sweetie, I don't know who you are. I don't understand what's going on. And then they do take a break. And then Nongu goes to her friend, Tobile, and she's like, um... What? Did you did you see how weird that was? There was an elephant in the room, and whatever. And then Tavila is like, "What are you talking about?" And I loved her response. She's like, "I'm so lost." What did you want her to say? I'm so lost. I loved it because everybody was lost on the table. Nobody knew what was going on besides Donkey and I think Ayanda. These two knew exactly what was going on, but Unonku had no tact in the way she approached Ayanda because she should not have approached Ayanda payana in that setting she should have approached her another time because then she looked like a damn fool because i ended was like girl i don't know who you is and i don't know why you are like trying to make you feel special i don't know you 
So that was the case, and then I can unoko drop her a bombs bombshell ndase bombshell 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 yom shaba. No one was like, because the girls are still going on about like, come on, what was the um, elephant in the room? What are you guys talking about? Blah, blah, blah. I feel like there's something brewing. They knew there was something. Um, I feel like everybody knew what was going on. And Toby knew. I also would question, Ukuti, okay, Toby didn't know Ayanda was going to be there. She was just bringing her friend. But when this whole thing is happening, they all know. Tobile obviously knows that Nongu has a bone to pick with Ayanda. But now she's making her friend seem delusional for doing what she's doing. Which she was. She was not delusional, but I feel like she... It was not the right setting. It was not the right setting. Like, she should not have done that. It was wrong, 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 wrong. From all levels. It was just wrong. So now she took the chance and she made herself Bubu the Fool by herself, with no one's assistance, with no one pushing her, she did that to herself. So, she goes on, and obviously you can see Ayanda is not feeling Nongu because Ayanda knows who the hell Nongu be is. Okay? That is my that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Maybe she did not know her, but I think she knew her. Because it's just like, mm, what are the odds of you not knowing your husband's baby mama and... In, in this, like, you guys live in the same city and Nongku is not some regular, regular girl. Nongku is a prominent businesswoman and you guys have probably, like, seen each other. You guys roam around the same circles, clearly, because um, you know Tobile, you know Sorisha. Like, Durban is not, like, some mega city. Durban is very small. So, what are the odds of you not knowing her? I... And besides the fact that you guys might be bumping into each other, like because of circles she is your husband's baby mama i'm sure you have gone to her instagram and checked what is going on she knew exactly who that lady was like i had a i don't buy that one i'm sorry but yeah and then ooh, what pissed me off with the normal situation was the fact that she seemed so possessive over sviso it's almost like she wanted to like own him as hers. Um, I remember in the conversation between Tobile and Ayanda where Tobile was going on and saying, uh, oh my God, like you're so brave. You're such a strong woman, blah, blah, blah. Your husband meant so much to not only your family, but to all of us. And then Uno goes on and she says, um, so how do you deal with the media and everything that they're saying? Knowing very well where she's leading with this. Then Ayanna is like, no, um, I mean, I don't hang around dumb people. <laughs> Basically. Like, because she was, she wanted to, she wanted to, like, crack her. But Ayanna was like, no, I don't hang around dumb people who are going to be bringing out, like, stupid shit like that. <laughs> My friends know that it's not a, like, it's not a discussion. And the people I hang out with are civil enough to know that it's not a discussion. I don't hang around animals that are going to bring around negative shit to my face especially about my dead husband so i don't hang around with dumb people and i thought that was the perfect answer because unongu was just trying to be messenger throughout 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 until what they were pume kushen and then she says and then she says um you know uh you my child don't don't also i just find it so Mm, like what I was saying, I feel like bringing your kids and their drama, well not their drama, but like the whole situation around, like surrounding your kid to a reality show, I'm not sure how I feel about it. But to um, what I was saying earlier, this is real. This is her life. This is the drama she has with Ayanda. It's not fabricated drama. It's actual real life drama, you know? So that's why I was saying. I'm not sure how I feel about that one, but... Um, yeah, I really did enjoy the first episode. I thought it was refreshing, especially from the usual cattiness that usually happens with these shows. I think it was refreshing. And I also like the fact that 
these women were very, you know, upfront about their businesses and we saw the stuff that they did and I really enjoyed seeing like black women, successful black women who support each other seemingly because we don't know, seemingly supporting each other and, you know, just creating good vibes. I really, really like that. So I did enjoy the first episode and I'm looking forward to the second episode and I will obviously review it for you guys and we can chat about it. You guys can leave all your comments down below. Tell me you guys um tell me what you guys think about it and let's have a good old discussion. So yeah. So yeah. Anyway guys, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys on my next video. Bye bye.